You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Crash Landing by Moira Gillen. Shards of light impossibly sharp spear my brain. Gasping, I move to sit, but dizziness makes the metal-colored clouds whirl. Vertigo awe inspired by a sky so strange or just a head injury. I stay horizontal, but force my watering eyes to remain open so they can adjust. So I can adjust. Liquid begins falling, globules splattering my faceplate to converge along the jagged crack, but none seep through. Visor holds, thank stars. I have no idea whether this substance is toxic. The atmosphere breathable? I raise my left arm to check the meter. The good news. My suit's air supply is 83%. The bad news? I have no clue where my ship is, what condition it's in, or how long it'll take for someone to respond to my distress signal. 83 or 8.3% irrelevant if no rescue arrives for a lunar cycle. I allow two breaths of self-pity before a cursory self-evaluation. Left leg, present and accounted for. Right, sore but manageable. Right arm, hmm. Sudden commotion overtakes all anatomical considerations. I feel for my laser, but before I can draw the strangest organism I've ever laid eyes on waddles into sight. Spikes. Thick, elongated needles protrude from 90% of its body. I wonder whether I should attempt to communicate, but when it raises its ugly snout, the one part of its body free of menacing barbs, I catch the dull look in its eyes. Clearly a specimen of local fauna. We exchange suspicious glares before Spikeling decides I'm not that much of a threat. It noses rotting vegetation, but finding nothing of interest, shambles away with a disappointed snuffle. I track its departure and am struck by the shocking green of my surroundings. It's so pervasive it's almost offensive to the senses. Tentacles of it poke from the ground to grope hungrily toward that metal sky, whilst other iterations top the gray-brown stalks all around. Some smooth, some slim, reaching not much higher than my head before bursting into fist-sized discs and exotic verdant tones. Others rough-skinned and at their thickest points several times larger than my torso, climbing to dizzying heights before spreading in a dazzling canopy far above. Every hue more vibrant than any green at home. My reverie is short-lived. A blurred form plummets from nowhere, three arms lengths away. I shield my face, but the thing has no interest in me. Its fierce toes close around a third creature, equally bizarre. My brain refuses to process the flurried scene. I scramble to take mental notes from my field journal. If I ever make it back to the ship, that is. The diving beast's wings are twice the length of its body, from a hooked nose to fan tail. Now it has its prey. It soars away fast, difficult to be certain, but it appears to be clad in a Fur, not fur, substance. The mottled colors of decaying vegetable matter. Its coat transitions to a pair of scaled limbs ending in lethal-looking daggers. Alien fauna isn't my forte, but I know someone back home who gives a month's wages for half a soul studying this life form. And the unlucky organism in its clutches? A writhing worm of a thing. The length of my forearm at least, but scaly as the claws that snatched it. Fascination momentarily drives away all else. The exhilaration of discovery reminds me why I keep this job despite the danger, despite repeated promises that each mission will be my last. Of course, unless I find my ship, this time really might be. Panicked memories of the crash are shifting impressions. Flashing lights, alarms falling, trying to piece it together makes my head throb. Distant but loud squawks interrupt my thoughts. I rise on unsteady legs and make my way in the direction of the din, slowing as I near to peer from behind a group of stalks. 
more animals, and they've discovered the wreckage of my ship. My heart leaps. My stomach sinks. More detritus than craft now. Repairs would be impossible. I study the two creatures surreptitiously, exponentially bigger than spikling. They are also more brightly colored. The larger's coat is blotchy brown, its trunk glaring orange. The smaller hindquarters are blue, its torso yellow. As they caper, bellowing around my ship's remains, I begin to suspect they're not rearing back. Moving on hind legs appears to be their default. My scalp prickles. Sentience? Throughout the galaxy, such locomotion seems linked to at least rudimentary intellect. Is this the dominant species of its planet, its people? Perhaps I can... My hopes are dashed. When the green-orange one turns my direction and I glimpse the dimness in its eyes, the dull-witted expression. So, not people. But as I watch, its eyes widen. Panic knifes my middle. My hiding spot is spotted. Maw gaping, it raises an appendage in my direction and squalls. What on earth? What the hell's that? Almost before I hear the ear-splitting bang, my shoulder explodes in agony. The creature's paw, empty, mere heartbeats ago, clutches what can only be a weapon, crude but effective. Now the others see me and roar. I don't wait to see what happens next. Self-preservation wins over pain. I flee. They give chase, but they're clumsy. Even injured, I soon outpace their lumbering pursuit. More echoing booms, but I keep running. When I no longer hear their outraged cries, I slow, search for concealment. Twelve paces away, a huge stalk lies hollow. I squirm inside. With concentrated effort, I quiet my gasping breaths, listening. No sound of my pursuers. Maybe I've lost them. My only hope is that headquarters receives my distress signal that I can stay hidden until a rescue team tracks me down before I die of my wounds or starvation. I calm the staccato pounding of my hearts by picturing Misha's face and the dual sons of Glaratu. I should stay alert, but all three eyelids are heavy. Exhaustion drags me down. I fever dream of home. This was Crash Landing by Moira Gillen. After five plus years of being a librarian in a small town in Western Maryland, Moira quit to pursue her dream of writing full time. In addition to being a wife and mother and writing shorter pieces, mostly dark fiction, horror, and speculative fiction, Moira is also hard at work on revising her first novel length manuscript a full-length women's historical speculative fiction ghost story entitled Edgewood. You can find out more about her and her writing at moiragillen.com. Find links to some of her stories currently for sale in anthologies and to several short stories, in-progress or rough draft stories for casual readers. Follow her on Twitter for new publications. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga. <laughs>